Well, everyone, it's time for us to go ahead and take a look at the iPhone 8 and see how this phone holds up in pretty much the later part of 2022. Now, there have been so many things that have changed with this iPhone, which is so random. And funny enough, just yesterday, the iPhone 8 was trending on Twitter, which is actually very, very random. I don't know why that was happening. But with the iPhone 8, this was actually one of the least, this is like the lowest supported iPhone right now on iOS 16, which is crazy. So I did my mid-year review of this thing earlier this year, or like mid-year of this year, and a lot of things changed then, and still to this day, a lot of things have changed. So first of all, what I'll tell you is, I think the iPhone 8 is still great. You know, if you own this phone, keep it. It's a decent phone for the price tag, but you do have to kind of remember at the back of your head that this is an iPhone that is probably going to be discontinued sooner than later. And if you're actively trying to go out and buy a new iPhone, this will probably not be the best option. You might be better off if you buy something like the iPhone, you know, 10 even, or maybe like an iPhone 11, iPhone 12. Those will definitely be better options for the most part. But what I will tell you is right now, the iPhone 8, it's on iOS 16. It's gotten the next, it's probably going to be getting iOS 17 as well. And it's gotten, you know, compared to at least the iPhone 14s at my standpoint, and it doesn't hold up that bad. You know, the 4.7 inch panel on this thing, the glass back, the build quality is probably the best thing about this phone right now, to be honest. And I'll definitely say when compared to the iPhone SE 3 that came out earlier this year, it's not bad, you know, it doesn't hold up that bad. But when you compare it against the iPhone 14s, or even like the iPhone 11, like there's massive differences. The home button to gesture based design, massive difference right there. The performance increase on the iPhone 14s is amazing. The cameras that we have nowadays are really good, especially the features that iPhones have been kind of bringing in the last few years. They've been improving a lot. So with an iPhone 8, you are missing out on those features. Even if the build quality, like it still feels like a very premium phone, you were still missing out on a lot of those cool other things because of the type of situation that we're in. So that's kind of the problem that we're in now. But otherwise though, I will say on iOS 16, this iPhone has held up very decently. You know, I'm actually quite surprised to see how well this iPhone has been holding up probably for the last two years since iOS 15 came out. Now, this iPhone didn't get all the features within iOS 16. I would have loved to have seen that. If this iPhone got, you know, all the features within iOS 16, that'd be a completely different story. But because we didn't get that, we're kind of stuck in this like limbo position where this iPhone is an older iPhone. There's not really a big reason to pick this iPhone up anymore compared to like maybe some other devices. So what I will tell you is for a 20, you know, 17 iPhone that was supposed to be, I guess, the cheapest option at that time, besides an iPhone SE model, it's definitely not a bad iPhone at, you know, by any stretch of the means. And I think it was a really big upgrade coming from the iPhone 7. But because the iPhone 10 came out at the same time, it pretty much just overshadowed these iPhones, which were already pretty decent. Apple could have probably even waited a year to drop the iPhone 10, to be honest. But the iPhone 10 overshadowed the other iPhones. And the iPhone 8 is one of those devices that a lot of people probably won't remember. But I love that iPhone. I think it's super impactful. And I do think it's probably one of the best iPhones. I wouldn't say it's one of the best iPhones of all time, but I'll probably say it's definitely not a bad iPhone. And I'll probably put it in the upper half of iPhones for the most part. You can probably buy this thing for like $100, probably even less than that nowadays. So definitely not a bad option. But I'll definitely say if you have it, I would probably recommend keeping it. If you don't have it, I would probably recommend going up to an iPhone 10, 10 or an iPhone 11 for the most part. So that kind of covers it up. If you have any other thoughts or questions, let me know in the comment section below. Hit the like button, that means so much, but definitely hit that subscribe button. More importantly than everything else, I love every single one of you guys. Hopefully I'll catch you guys in the next video. Peace out till then.